Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. So today uh, we have the last lecture uh, of this lecture series, satellite meteorology. Uh, it was a little bit uh, uh, delayed due to some of the technical, uh, some of the personal issues. Uh, but today, Mohesar is available. So he will talk about that satellite data and its applications. Uh, before that, I just would like to, because usually each and every time we call the Secretary of uh, Professor Shamesha Dasya for uh, welcoming. But today he is not available because he is traveling. So on behalf of uh, our Secretary, Professor Dr. Shamesha Das, I am welcoming all of the participants and all of the panelists for the last lecture of the uh, Satellite Meteorology Weekly Online Lecture Series. Today, the talk would be use of satellite data for climate service by uh, Sri Mahesh P, scientist SF in uh, NRSC, Hyderabad, India. Uh, Sari is new, so just I want to introduce few of the points. Uh, around 60 countries were registered uh, more than 2,500 uh, participants also registered. In general, we had uh, not less than 25 countries participate and around 200 uh, participants, 250 countries and 200 participants. Uh, so uh, after this uh, completion of this lecture series, we will organize, uh, we will conduct a quiz or exam, we will conduct an exam that is maybe around 15 days after this closing program. So, and uh, Sama is that uh, one of the South Asian Meteorological Association. We are actively doing a lot of different, different activities. Started with atmospheric basic physics, WRF training, each and everything. I think the more details uh, will be done by uh, Ajit Tagi, sir. Uh, he is the president of Sama. So, sir, uh, please, you unmute and say a few words to welcome for this last lecture series. Sir, your volume, your voice is not coming. Hello. Yeah, hello. Am I audible now? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, uh, it is a matter of great satisfaction that we are at the last lecture of the 20 lecture series. And for this, I like to acknowledge and convey my sincere thanks and gratitude to the uh, Satellite Met Committee chaired by Bhatia Saab along with Baby Simon um, and uh, members from the NRSC. We had a guidance available from them. Also from the SEC, the India Med Department. So it had been a great, great uh, support from all our uh, members and the resource persons drawn from all uh, key institutions uh, uh, working in the satellite meteorology. Uh, they have provided us uh, a complete end-to-end -end, right from the basics to the advanced applications. So it had been a very, very, I think, productive uh, lecture series uh, because of the active participation of our resource persons and of course uh, coordinated by the organizing committee uh, led by Swagata, Dubya Prakash and other key um, members of the ECT, Rohini, Mohan Kumar. Uh, so we are really happy to reach at this stage. There had been an overwhelming response from the participants both online and followed on the YouTube. 
uh, again um, i had been emphasizing that it is the introductory talk covering all aspects and in the area with which you are interested uh, um, i request participants to get in touch with the resource persons and they have kindly agreed uh, to guide you to suggest you that how to um, Uh, take your work forward um, in the field of satellite meteorology. So once again, welcome Mahesh. We are sorry that uh, there was some tragedy in the family, so you couldn't deliver lecture. But thank you for cooperating and uh, joining us today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, we are really grateful. Thank you for this. Um, the spirit in which uh, our scientists and our colleagues work is really their dedication. Uh, it's commendable so once again thanks to all uh, the people who had been involved in planning this uh, 20 lecture satellite program resource persons and of course uh, the backbone is the organizing committee uh, of, we don't have today somesh is traveling uh, he, he had been uh, i think uh, giving support to swagata divya and other ect members to organize this particular series of lectures so once again thank you and uh, really compliments and congratulations to entire team thank you over to you swagata sir yeah, thank you sir i was mute i didn't notice thanks thanks a lot for welcoming uh, to give the welcome address now i would like to request uh, dr rohini bhavar uh, for introducing uh, the today's uh, speaker thank you dr swagata so so i am it's my pleasure to introduce shri mahesh p he is presently working as a scientist sf Uh, in national remote sensing center that is in rsc isro hyderabad india he has completed his btech in physical sciences from iist trivandrum and ms by research from iit hyderabad he is currently also pursuing his phd in spatial informatics from iit hyderabad professional experience he is a pi of different projects sponsored by nicis on polar research and web based climate services also he is a pi for the projects sponsored by isro gb entitled land ocean atmospheric greenhouse gas interaction experiments and atmospheric co2 retrieval and monitoring of national carbon project he has actually conceptualized the nohian x project to study and comprehend the land atmosphere and air sea interaction processes and regional climate change studies he initiated for the first time in india the comprehensive aim airborne campaign for greenhouse gases and other trace gases He has established India's first Fourier transform infrared spectrometer, a ground-based remote sensing of columnar greenhouse gases and other trace gases. He developed in-house line-by-line radiator transfer algorithm to retrieve the atmospheric comp uh, composition from the solar spectrum, and he is also the first researcher from India to collect CO2 and CH4 observations in the polar regions. He has over 35 publications in peer-reviewed journals, 10. More than ten R and D technical reports and fifteen uh, conference papers. He was a review editor for the one of the chapters of Assessment of Climate Change over the Indian Region, which is a springer book uh, by Ministry of India, Government of India, which is also popularly known as India's IPCC. He was a mentor and evaluator in Smart India Hackathon in 2020, Government of India, and panelist in the National Greenhouse Gas Week Workshop. Which was organized by IUPM MOS. He has also won the best paper awards. So we are very fortunate to have Sri Mahesh P. Over to you, Dr. Swagata. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Rohini. Uh, now uh, I would like to invite uh, our speaker, Sri Mahesh P. Now stage is yours. So we are waiting for your nice presentation. Yeah, th thank you so much. Uh, and uh, small correction in uh, Dr. Rohini's uh, introductory. Uh, I did my masters from Triple IIT Hyderabad and uh, and PhD and so pursuing from Triple IIT Hyderabad, not IIT oh. Hyderabad. So oh, sorry. I, I, it's okay. No, no problem. So I just wanted to say that. 
and thank you so much for your uh, excellent introductory uh, i mean inter- uh, brief for bio data of mine uh, for reading that and thank you so much and this uh, uh, and, and an entire arm- uh, amazing team so for understanding my the, the then situation and uh, rescheduling the program and i am very much thankful to you everyone and uh, today like i'll be talking about the use of the satellite data for the climate services uh, which are uh, actually by the different uh, people different ministries and different centers from uh, uh in, in the country so this is actually a new topic that we have started in nrsc also uh so that is why we it is relevant to me but uh, we are not expertise in this uh, development of services but i will try to cover i mean uh, share the information as much as possible from my side so this uh, uh again once again everyone uh, welcome everyone uh, for this excellent program that is sama south asian uh, south asian uh, metro Technological Association, uh, the organizing this program, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, the today's talk will be like use of satellite data for climate services. So this is very much important topic, and uh, even the IPCC AR6 has uh, pressed upon this to uh, to bring out the services because they will play the uh, uh, decision making role uh, when it comes to the services, and which covers the uh, different spheres of the the uh, the climate and also the uh, the uh, di- directly it will connect to the sustainable development goals also so how the satellite plays a uh, role in uh, uh, for uh, giving this uh, services uh, climate services so that we will uh, try to see today and uh, as ipcc summarized uh, uh, in uh, ar6 that is a 2023 report so the the target is uh, limit the temperature uh, within uh, 1.5 degree celsius and not exceeding 2 degree celsius so that the adoption of uh, the uh, the adoption uh, uh, policy uh, adoption adoption strategies will be having the less cost effective compared to the if uh, the uh, the the targeted temperature increases beyond 2 degrees celsius then the adoption will be more so the the uh, it is very well understood from ipcc ar1 that is the 1990 report to till today that ar6 at 2023 report it is very well understood that the burning fossil fuels are the major uh, uh, factors for the climate change and it is uh, the biggest cause for the climate crisis today we are facing in uh, different spheres of the the globe so uh, and uh, uh, as part of uh, this ar6 uh, summarization of ar6 uh, report says that uh, uh, the removal of carbon is the uh, main goal from different countries which are uh, like uh, uh, contributing for the more emissions uh, through emissions uh, uh, by uh, burning the fossil fuels so which will uh, to keep the temperature within 1.5 degrees celsius that is uh, the, that is one of the major agenda of the uh, the summary report and uh, because the change in climate is hugely uh, linked with the economy so as the as this increases the climate uh, crisis as it increases so it will have a huge impact on even economy so that is also must be taken care and uh, plan the mitigation and adopt- adaptation strategies that is what ar6 also says and everyone we know that this uh, representation concentration pathways rcps to give the uh, emission tracking scenarios uh, at, at a d- different scenarios so for example this uh, rcp representation rcp means a representative concentration pathways if it is rcp 2.6 uh, means it's a 2.6 watt meter or watt per meter square that is a ready to force Uh, and how much temperature it it increases so rcp 8.5 the uh, is the 8.5 or uh, watt per meter square is uh, 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 moreover equivalent to some 4 4 to 5 degrees celsius rise in the temperature so but today the, the emissions are at this phase but uh, as per the the uh, uh, cop 21 uh, agreement from different nations it says that the, the, to limit the uh, the uh, i mean to reduce this uh, today's uh, uh, the tracking of rcp 8.5 and bring it to the rcp 4.5 level at least to uh, to ma- maintain the temperature below 2 degree celsius so as it increases the rcp pathways so the more adaptation also the the stringent strategy is also required to be uh, implemented but if is rcp 2.6 less adaptation is required and uh, this rcp is a combination of uh, different contributors actually like uh, the uh, increase of burning of uh, uh, increase of uh, fossil fuels burning or the the less uh, if it is rcp 8.5 Uh, then it is a, uh, the gen- energy generated from the renewable energy is less so if it is rcp 2.6 that means the impl- uh, uh, the adoption of more renewable energy concept and reducing the uh, uh, fossil fuel burning so Mahesh, in that combination hello mahesh uh, sorry yeah. to disturb you are you changing the slides because we are not able to see it uh, no no i have not it started i mean okay. the one slide okay, only yeah yeah okay. so 
so that is the combination of this rcp 2.6 to 8.5 to understand the the climate change uh, in terms of uh, global warming and these are the climate risk if you see that uh, like if it is a temperature at 1.5 degrees celsius uh, the uh, risk like biodiversity loss is at 14 uh, 14% uh, the biodiversity loss is expected and if uh, this is again uh, from the ipcc report and if uh, if you see that the temperature is raised by 2 3 degrees celsius at the end of the 21st century then the loss of biodiversity is uh, expected to be 29% so the drought uh, the, the dryland population also so these are some of the cr uh, critical crises uh, which will be impacted if the temperature changes from 1.5 degrees celsius to celsius to 3 degrees celsius but what is the ratio uh, if you if you compare 1.5 degree versus 2 degree celsius it is 1.3 worse than the uh, 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 1.3 times more worst uh, compared to 1.5 uh, degree Celsius. So same as uh, like if we compare against a 3 degree Celsius, uh, it is a 2.1 times worse. So drought, food security, the how much impact in each uh, the component uh, is uh, projected in the IPCC AR6 report. Also extreme event uh, if we take in a year. So in a particular year, we'll see 45 to 84, uh, 45 to 58 days if the temperature is below 1.5 degree, less than or equal to 1.5 degree Celsius, and it will be around 66 to uh, 66 to uh, 87 days uh, if it is, if the temperature uh, uh, rose to 3 degree Celsius. So like that, the the extreme events like two to four times will increase if it is a temperature below 2 degree, uh, 1.5 degree Celsius. Sea level rise is 0.28 uh, meter uh, if the temperature is uh, close to 1.5 degree Celsius, and today. we are seeing that uh, sea level rise is at, uh, at the rate of uh, 3.4 uh, mm to 3.5 mm uh, per year a, a, a raise in sea level so floods the uh, the occurrence of floods and increase of uh, uh, floods also will be uh, depending on the the temperature rise so coral reefs which is also very important when it comes to the carbon sequestration and uh, uh, remote sensing has evolved in the last two decades uh, to three decades in different aspects Uh, when it comes to the the uh, the gases like greenhouse gases, which is a more uh, 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 potent uh, uh, radiative forces, which have a significant impact on this warming, direct impact uh, on warming. Like today, so we see that radiative forcing by the uh, CO2 alone is around 1.7 to 1.8 watt per meter square, which is uh, directly having an impact of uh, 0.7 to 0.8 degrees Celsius on the temperature. And like that, methane and other gases. So there are uh, the i mean the technology has evolved from uh, uh, the last two decades we see from higher uh, temporal and uh, spatial uh, uh, context and uh, the it has increased a lot uh, uh, and also we, even we are able to detect in point level sources of uh, these emissions and these are the these are the data today we have uh, available from uh, different uh, the the uh, providers and uh, different uh, uh, agencies we have uh, different kinds of data sets to to understand the what is happening happening in the different aspects of the uh, its atmosphere and its uh, uh, terrestrial biosphere and the all the spheres of the earth land ocean atmospheric uh, the interactions can be can be very well understand from these uh, available data sets so the how the climatic and uh, climate and energy so as we know that uh, one of the large i mean the, the largest contributor uh, to the uh, burning uh, fossil fuels and the are uh, the emissions of greenhouse gases is the energy basically so there are uh, different types of energy generation so when we burn more fossil fuels so it releases co2 to the atmosphere and it is distributed uh, due to the general circulation uh, it, it is distributed uh, across the globe and also every every sphere of the the globe acts at uh, uh, different uh, proportion uh, to hold the uh, uh, co2 in the atmosphere or to uh, sequester the uh, to capture the co2 uh, co2 from the atmosphere so every sphere will act uh, different so the and when we uh, like fossil fuel releases co2 emissions to the atmosphere and it uh, redistributes like atmosphere it, it some of the co2 uh, stays in the atmosphere some of the uh, co2 is uh, captured by the oceans through bicarbonic acid or the main the phytoplankton which is there that acts as a uh, the, that 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 plays a role to capture the co2 from the atmosphere and also so biosphere also the like uh, the uh, evergreen forest uh, they sequester more co2 um, from the atmosphere so but when it is re re redistributed across the uh, different uh, uh, the the spheres of the uh, earth like atmosphere ocean or uh, the land so it it has uh, the uh, impact like the when when the when uh, when more co2 present in the atmosphere it will have a radiative forcing effect because the outgoing long wave radiation is absorbed by these gases and it creates the earth warming and also the presence of this uh, more uh, these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere also the, in the long run changes the uh, distribution of uh, precipitation 
and temperature sea level rise so these are all connected these are all in feedback loop which will have a uh, impact on each each parameter and when we have uh, sudden sea level rise or uh, when we see that uh, extreme uh, rainfall or precipitation or are more warming so it will have uh, impact on ecosystems agriculture and uh, the diseases of uh, 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 of the uh, i mean the human as well as the the uh, ecosystems also uh, this measures to control emissions so it will have uh, i mean it will have even the financial implications on different uh, uh, aspects so that is how this uh, the activity versus the climate change has a uh, direct linkage so the how we uh, today the because of the the rapid uh, Uh, and uh, the improved uh, technology from the space so we are able to uh, see uh, the, these parameters at a different uh, uh, different scales so today we have uh, the even the global level and india level the uh, regional level uh, we have a, st uh, a strong observational network which will be act as a the lo uh, uh, local uh, the phenomena it will address directly the local phenomena what is happening in the particular location and uh, the remote sensing will give us the larger picture <coughs> what exactly it is happening across the regions to globe and the modeling also has improved like uh, today's the weather forecast and climate models are uh, are well well improved and will be give the short term to the short term medium range and long term uh, uh, forecast and which will be mo mostly the 95% uh, confidence interval with uh, with that accuracy we will be we are able to see from the most of the models and the climate services are also linked with the resource resource risk management adaptation mitigation so all these The, the 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 components are part of the climate services and these are the uh, data sets like uh, uh, space based and ground based also the like uh, modeling when the where these uh, three integrate as a, as an integrated component so these will have uh, the record on climate and which will be useful for what the different application and that application will enable the policy uh, decision makers to take uh, the uh, right decisions and also implement the uh, mitigation strategies Uh, across the globe so the architecture for climate monitoring from space like as we discussed the the sensing uh, sensing uh, sense of uh, i mean sense earth from uh, earth environment like uh, observing the earth uh, from the space and creating the climate data records so which uh, which will like uh, for minimum 30 years is uh, called to be a climate data record but even uh, the the uh, some of the parameters are available more than 30 years so the the climate data records then once we have the climate data records so here it goes the processing uh, chain then we will be developing ma many applications in terms of services that goes as a decision making and reporting and uh, uh, data generation which will help the uh, uh, for uh, which will help the for uh, making the good decisions and uh, uh, there are major organizations across the globe and also in india uh many organizations uh, focusing on uh, different uh, uh, aspects to 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 generate all these uh, like atmosphere ocean land so the services uh, based on uh, these uh, sphere uh, services so the uh, <coughs> the <coughs> world meteorological organization which is the which is the largest uh, networked uh, uh, and oldest organization to give the, the uh, internationally the uh, the reliable information about the the uh, weather as well as the climate related Uh, aspect so as part of this uh, wmo integrated uh, uh, the uh, system so there are the observations which are connected from the airborne which are connected from the ship based or radio sound ozone sound or radio sound which gives the uh, information about the uh, weather uh, and geostationary satellite which plays a major role in the uh, uh, in the weather forecasting system because the, which gives the which sees the, the some part of the region continuously and it will help Uh, to to give the better forecasting of the weather related aspect <coughs> as you also know that uh, climate data records from copernicus and i think uh, most of us know that uh, the uh, cc3s uh, the copernicus climate change services which has a different uh, which is which is providing information on different uh, uh, different parameters like emissions uh, bottom up em emissions and surface uh, surface fluxes of greenhouse gases this information will be very much useful to understand that uh, what kind of uh, the emissions are happening i mean what kind of sources or what kind of activities happening in that particular location which is which is generating uh, this this much of uh, emissions from uh, on uh, co2 or other greenhouse gases so this this is bottom up inventory is also going to the ipcc report when the when the projections are given uh, in the in the, in the report 
also global analysis forecast and reanalysis data so today we have uh, the best ecmwf uh, data uh, one of the uh, <coughs> high resolution uh, data is available from the ecmwf uh, uh, european center for uh, medium range uh, weather forecast which gives hourly data also uh, to <coughs> which will be use useful for this uh, services and uh, and this data is uh, very much important because uh, like for example here solar radiation <coughs> sorry solar radiation and uv index which is uh, having direct impact on radiative forcing you know that uh, there are four components of uh, radiation so when we compute that outgoing versus uh, incoming and outgoing long wave radiation and incoming short wave radiation so whatever the the uh, the balance or imbalance in the range uh, in the in the radiation so which like uh, we we are supposed to receive it uh, at the earth surface 342 watt per meter square but when it uh, when outgoing long wave radiation uh, which is supposed to escape to the atmosphere but due to presence of uh, different uh, trace gases or greenhouse gases in the atmosphere some of the energy gets altered which is absorbed by this presence of these greenhouse gases which changes the energy which is supposed to be uh, keep that uh, if, if if that kind of atmosphere is not there so the energy would have been balanced but because of uh, the excess gases in the atmosphere the radiative forcing which are uh, which are towards the positive side and creating the warming effect on a surface and these are uh, like copernicus ecmwf uh, so one can uh, download and on even uh, online uh, like uh, plug and play you can uh, uh, in the in the in the web portal itself we can write a small code to generate uh, the required uh, app excuse me uh... I am a little doubt. Mean, are you changing the slide, or you are? We need to keep in the first slide. No, no, I am changing. No, but it is. Uh, not there is no change. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Actually, you need to share full screen. Then only it will come. Yes, yes. I share. Yeah. Now, Copernicus yeah, climate data studies. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah, I kept it in uh, full slide mode. Uh, no, no, it is not included. Yeah. yeah, still it is not included. Are in you seeing now Copernicus? Yeah, now we can see the Copernicus. It is slide number nine, but slide number two to eight was not displayed. Can you see the change now? No. No. Can you can you, can you unshare again and share the full screen, not the application only? Yeah. Yeah. Please. I'll just again stop sharing. And share the entire screen, then it's okay. I thought it's moving. Yeah, in between, Rohini actually asked also. Ah, uh, actually, at that time I was at first slide only. I thought so. <laughs> no problem, but now. So you, you share the slide, press F5, yeah. and then just do one. Thing. Yeah, just, just one minute. It's yeah. one.
So in the meantime, I would like to uh, say all the participants. Uh, today is the last lecture of this lecture series. Then uh, by a week, we'll uh, we'll send the details in WhatsApp group and email about the exam date. And when we'll share the exam date on that same time, we'll also share that one page of abstract of uh, nearly uh, all the lectures. And if you have any queries on that time, please ask us. We are there to solve your any problems, any issues. And also, you know, I would like to uh, get some feedback. Um, you can send by email or there are no other way also. Uh, that how how did you feel and do you need uh, this type of course further or not now it's full screen I can see full screen now. Yeah, now it is full screen and Copernicus as well. The ninth slide, yeah. So. Yeah, can we request him to go just do a little bit? Yeah, at uh, least from 342 meters per square. Yeah, 300 meter per. Sorry, 342 watt per meter square. At least from there, if you start, because the basic. Is it it's visible now, but uh, we have a little request. If you can go back at least one, two slides where you are talking about uh, that uh, radiative force, uh -huh, okay. 340 watt uh, per meter square from that. Yeah. Uh, actually, that uh, I was just uh, telling that it is not written there. Okay, because uh, maximum. So, like, that is 68 degrees the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Maximum participants are students and okay. researchers. So, your basic starting would be more beneficial for them so if you can quickly you know go through so can i explain here that part yeah 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 ready yeah yeah where your mouse yeah, is for example here. the ready to yeah. forcings uh what we are talking <clears throat> so actually uh what uh, i think now slides are moving right yes yes slides are moving. yeah thank you so the actually the radio to forcing is uh, nothing but the the energy difference uh, like the outgoing long wave radiation versus the incoming short wave radiation if the radi uh, if the uh, uh, net force the net energy if it is a positive it will have a positive forcing on the uh, air surface if it is a negative uh, energy then it it will have a negative impact on uh, the cooling effect basically cooling effect on air surface so for example, uh, two parameters I'll explain here. One is uh, CO2. Uh, if you take uh, CO2, then the uh, black carbon are uh, sulfate aerosols. For example, sulfate aerosols, which comes from the ocean or uh, the volcanic eruption, the ocean mostly the aerosols are in the form of sulfate aerosols, and which it is having a uh, impact. Uh, the scattering effect is more sig uh, significant. So due to that, the all energies uh, escape uh, to the uh, 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 it's, I mean, uh, the space uh, to the, uh, uh, we, we, it will not come to the uh, atmosphere. So it will have a cooling effect. Whereas the black carbon or uh, CO2 is an absorbing, uh, part, uh, black carbon is an absorbing particle. It's a pursuit particle basically. So that have a uh, positive forcing and like the, the CO2. So in which uh, if, if you list out uh, some, some of the uh, major parameters like CO2, CH4, black carbon or sulfate aerosols and other things, uh, carbon monoxide or uh, uh, nitrous oxide. These parameters, if you list out, so CO2 has a 1.7 uh, watt per meter square is the energy difference that is a forcing. And uh, 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 if you model that forcing to the uh, ready to transfer algorithms, then then we will see that how much temperature impact directly impact on the earth surface. So that is what I was trying to explain. This radiation budget, which is having a species to species, there will be a delta difference of the forcing. That forcing, how much it, it has an independent, I mean, individual uh, the species level contribution on uh, earth uh, surface temperature, uh, rising at surface temperature. 
so uh, uh, 1368 watt per meter square for example the uh, constant at the top of the atmosphere uh, if you assume so from the space uh, top of the atmosphere to the earth surface there are so many mediums like clouds are there particles are there uh, so species are there and uh, the, uh, uh, because of these uh, the combinations in the uh, uh, it's uh, the medium uh, between these uh, top of the atmosphere to the earth surface so every every uh, every component in this uh, uh, path will have a uh, different role some of the energy the mag uh, majority of the uh, energy is uh, transmitted back by the clouds and also uh, some energy is absorbed by the gaseous and particles in the atmosphere so uh, supposed to reach uh, uh, the 342 watt per meter square at the top of the, uh, at the earth surface but because of presence of these gaseous are these the uh, particles in the atmosphere that energy is getting uh, uh, altered and we are not re receiving that uh, what we uh, the theoretically we need to receive at the earth surface that is the energy re radiation energy balance uh, uh, <coughs> that we call actually and uh, this is uh, like uh, uh, our uh, one of the major center in isro uh, uh, space application center uh, is uh, also responsible for this uh, 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 some of the activities on uh, the weather uh, weather forecast uh, uh, on uh, like for example cyclone track using our insert series of uh, data Uh, our uh, sac also is uh, uh, continuously uh, tracking the cyclones uh, and also predicting and forecasting these uh, cyclones uh, cyclone tracks and also sea sea state and uh, the extreme events and cloud burst also sometimes uh, they uh, they also started on uh, lightning alerts and also uh, the the uh, the uh, uh, nrc has established very very uh, uh, rich in terms of ground based network lightning uh, to uh, to see the real time uh, the effects of i mean to, to to real uh, real time to detect the lightnings and lightning prone areas also so these are all uh, like a satellite based activities are uh, done by our space application center using the remote sensing data so uh, this is uh, mosdec is a meteorological and oceanographic data and information services so this this comes from and there are many other parameters i think researchers uh, or students uh, should explore this side and uh, you you will be able to uh, get many much information from this and which will be uh, really uh, utilized for the uh, the day to day research uh, in the different fields and these are the, these are all like a different application like if you see the cyclone uh, uh, file in uh, is also the high resolution wrf model prediction also so the cyclone track how they have done uh, during that file in uh, the one of this uh, uh, very severe uh, cyclone and also the overlaid wind so that the it can be tracked uh, the uh, how the cyclone uh, the cyclone is is moving so these can the, these are also as as uh, has been done uh, uh, using this uh, weather research uh, forecast models and extreme rainfalls today we are talking uh, the uh, the which is uh, one of the, the like uh, the uh, disastrous activity so because the extreme rainfall event uh, which we which is not just dependent on the uh, the excess rainfall basically because the any disaster uh, which comes from like flash floods we talk about cloud bursts we talk about uh, and this uh, floods are the extreme rainfall which does not like uh, is not favored by one condition there are other atmospheric uh, like i think uh, the students should explore what is atmospheric rivers which plays a dominant role on this uh, the uh, the extreme events especially the precipitation floods and other things so these are also given by like uh, uh, our uh, sac and this is a hot weather out uh, uh, weather forecast and also we we, we uh, i think our sac is also giving Uh, heat wave uh, alerts cold wave alerts also yeah like as i said uh, these are things uh, provided from uh, this mosdec site and i think i strongly recommend to explore this site to see the the uh, different parameters in different spheres like see for example here the the tiles the city weather cold waves heat waves heavy rains lightning the lightning is also like uh, the modeling activity from the model they are able to see that uh, the lightning activity and lightning prone areas and monsoon and sea state uh, how the sea <laughs> sea rise and other things also and solar and wind energy also like uh, uh, today is the under as part of uh, renewable energy uh, the solar and wind energy how it can be utilized to generate the renewable energy and which is also uh, like uh, as part of cop 21 agreement how much renewable energy we need to generate as uh, from india so the uh, for that the solar and wind also a plays a major role for uh, generating the renewable energy so these are the next generation satellites some of them are already in place so the geostationary plays a very very prominent role when it comes to the weather forecasting related and the, the polar satellites uh, for the climate change in the long run uh, long term uh, the climate change affects also 
uh, can be seen from the uh, geostationary and polar satellite but uh, but when it comes to the uh, weather uh, related geostationary is the most recommended and geostationary of the like nova or isro or european space agency or uh, nasa like uh, you, if you go to the earth data portal so there are many uh, many services are provided by the earth data and also isro is also providing from different platforms that i will be talking in the last so these are the satellite available for the uh, for these services and indian meteorological uh, department uh, i think uh, uh, everyone knows that uh, the, uh, what is the mandate of india meteorological department and how effectively they are giving this uh, cold wave heat wave lightning and floods and uh, the extreme i mean disaster uh, related activities and also uh, which are the areas more prone for this uh, uh, the uh, lightning activity and which are the regions are the flood prone area uh, flood prone and the, what is the uh, frequency of occurrence of uh, cyclones so these are all derived using both the ground based and uh, the uh, space based observations and also these are integrated to the uh, uh, models uh, through assimilation and the other, other other techniques so that the the simulation or forecast will be more accurate so that is what uh, it is done by the even uh, imd for when it comes to the weather forecast and at nrsc national remote sensing center um, uh, the uh, the we have a national database for emergency management uh, group uh, ndm as part of ndm we have a, uh, a, a disaster management related group uh, which we, which is also monitoring some of the activities like uh, the some of the disasters like meteorological disasters cyclones and geological dis disasters we know that the uh, recent disaster on forest fires which is Uh, seasonally uh, occurring and also sometimes uh, the if it is a human made sometimes it is uh, uh, non seasonal also but forest fire is also becoming uh, the major concern when it comes to the biodiversity and also the climate and also weather um, and uh, the the uh, extreme events so these are all very much important to monitor so that is why the, the how these activities uh, uh, are taken care by different uh, ministries or different organizations and flood inundation and nrsc is also uh, the the forecasting or uh, i mean the uh, simulating the flood inundation maps flood hazard zones and also flood vulnerability maps we are generating at uh, some of our, uh, our groups in nrsc and lightning tracks like uh, so tracking the lightning like uh, earlier there was a, a lsi sensor on trmm uh, 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 lightning uh, lis lightning imaging sensor so which was continuously uh, tracking the the uh, lightning related uh, information so but as part of this ghrc program of uh, nasa uh, uh, also like the global hydrometeor uh, meteorological resource center which is also giving this uh, strikes so so there are two types of uh, strikes uh, we should understand the cloud to cloud and cloud to ground so cloud to ground will have a significant impact and directly impact on the human health and the resources but the cloud to cloud when it comes to that it has a different aspects like um, the the atmospheric dynamics and also climate change related perspective also uh, sometimes the uh, the lightning induces the uh, enhancement of uh, pollutants which are in the upper atmosphere like no no2 which will uh, which will be enhanced by the presence of uh, the uh, by occurrence of this uh, lightning so the the cloud to ground is is a, is a, is a disastrous thing which is having impact on human health i mean the uh, the lives of uh, humans also the 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 many resources on the ground and ecmwf uh, today uh, the uh, as we uh, as i said in the beginning also like uh, uh, european center for uh, medium range weather forecast which is which is the one of the best uh, high resolution data uh, this is ensemble data reanalysis data which is uh, coming at hourly data and uh, which which will help us to uh, forecast the weather from uh, 1 to 2 hours that is a short range and the 6 to 12 hour medium range and long range in uh, uh, the, the in a month uh, like uh, different periods of uh, Uh, time periods of uh, uh, month so at uh, different scales uh, today we have the data resources to generate the forecast at different scales uh, uh, as we need uh, as per the requirement and climate prediction so we we know that the uh, the doubling of co2 so here the concept of doubling of uh, co2 is today the co2 levels are touched upon uh, close to 430 ppm 2023 annual mean if you see so close to 430 ppm so if you and 430 ppm how much uh, the uh, the rise in atmospheric uh, air surface temperature if it is a delta when you double the co2 concentration like uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh 860 or 860 ppm of uh, co2 then what would be the temperature rise so that is the projection that is a scenario uh, uh, based on that we have to see that uh, what kind of uh, 
uh, adaptation or mitigation strategies one should be implemented so so that the so that the, the, we don't see the extreme rise in uh, temperatures and subsequent uh, the uh, impact on extreme events so hotspot analysis like uh, there are many case studies uh, some of them i have taken from the open these are all open resources so like uh, uh, the agriculture droughts you see the 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 uh, african uh, africa you see may, may, uh, some of the regions are uh, highly prone uh, are the uh, persistent uh, uh, the <coughs> drought areas which is suffering from the 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 uh, uh, crop i mean the, the drought uh, which is not yielding uh, much crop so these are all some of the case studies like uh, for uh, the demonstration of uh, food security and uh, drought monitoring for food security so what are the satellites are available what kind of information goes to that uh, uh, the the processing like the climate data land surface temperature so to monitor the drought what are the parameters are required for example lst ndvi and temperature and precipitation so these are uh, for the when it comes to the drought these are the fundamental parameters which we need to have a climate data record that is 30 years plus then you apply you apply the processing chain and give the uh, the information services in terms of like drought mitigation measures in agriculture and uh, water management so uh, there are there are uh, uh, these this uh, the application or case studies depend on the parameter that we are uh, we, we are seeing uh, as a, as a service and glacier retreat also like uh, the how much glaciers are retreating and how much the melt is happening so the, the this is very much important when it comes to the hydrology the water uh, i mean the uh the water resources balance when we want to see that so this is very much important so what kind of satellite is available for this uh, glacier retreat monitoring and again same climate data is record is required so and the uh, again you operate that processing chain and give the information in terms of uh, the this service <coughs> air quality today the entire globe is uh, uh, talking about also uh, 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 i mean the besides the climate change air quality is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a uh, occurrent phenomena but uh, uh, we don't see that uh, like every every throughout the year particular location will face this air quality but it is very important because it is having direct impact on uh, human health also the environment so there are uh, like earth data is also uh, earth data is providing many satellites uh, to monitor the air quality Uh, because like uh, some of the parameters like uh, aerosol index aerosol optical depth carbon monoxide nitrous oxide nitrogen dioxide and pm 2.5 pm 10 also using this aerosol optical depth uh, pm 2.5 pm 10 also derive and these parameters and sulfur dioxide these are the parameters available in from earth data portal that is nasa's portal so one can uh, see that how air quality is changing over the globe because today uh, as i said in the beginning the spatial and temporal resolutions have evolved uh very very the very very useful uh, to the like point level information we are able to detect today uh, compared to like uh, the days uh, 300 km by 300 km spatial resolution to today we are at uh, 30 meter by 30 meter resolution uh, one example i would like to tell that uh, there is a sensor called emit which is on board uh, international space station which detects methane concentration and uh, uh, so that 30 meter we will be able to track that uh, methane plumes so the, if there is an industry how much uh, plume is coming out from that industry how it is uh, dispersed so that kind of uh, in, we are in that position to track the uh, even the the uh, pollution and the greenhouse gases so these are some of the like uh, the uh, uh, minister of earth science they have assimilated this spp sentinel 5p tropomet data um, uh, uh, retrieved the columnar observations aerosol index and nitrous oxide and uh formaldehyde hcso is a formaldehyde carbon monoxide so these parameters have been used to see that the hotspots of uh, uh, the air pollution <coughs> so like uh, sea level rise now uh, like as i said the global uh, sea level rise and this uh, 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 is at the rate of uh, like 3.4 to 3.5 mm per year uh, which which is also an alarming condition but if we see that like as we uh, just assume that if 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 we go to the rcp 8 if we continue to be rcp 8.5 uh, scenario then you you assume that the how much uh, the the uh, sea level rise can occur so uh, today we are at uh, uh, we are at uh, like uh, the concentrations around 430 ppm but if we double it to 860 ppm or 900 ppm so that the 
temperature the increase and the temperature increase of temperature will have the, the melt of uh, the sea ice and snow melt so all these things and will rise the the uh, sea, sea surface temperature also the subsequently sea level rise and once it rises so it will have again the impact on land so like uh, some of the this severe cyclone activity will have a, a huge disaster on that so these are all all interlinked the parameters which is having a direct impact on uh, humans and ozone hole surveys like uh, uh, we know that it occurs uh, typically the ozone hole uh, it, it is very much important and we have the global coverage from 19 uh, 1970 period the the ozone hole uh, was why why it is required actually uh, we know that the ozone hole is observed in the antarctica region and it occurs only on particular uh, time period it, uh, around august september months and then it then it it, it heals back uh, to the uh, rest of the season and <coughs> sorry and during uh, uh, trop in the tropical region uh, we are, we are in tropics so in the tropical region uh, the energy of uh, i mean the source of building up ozone is in the tropics but the depletion of ozone happens in the uh, uh, in the antarctic region because the polar stratospheric clouds uh, uh, i'll not go into the details of those chemistry but the, 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 there are the favorable condition in the polar region that is in, especially in antarctica because the the, uh, the low, lower temperatures which is required around minus 80 degree celsius minus 70 degree celsius to to react that chlorine and uh, deplete the, to destroy the ozone molecule in the stratosphere and the <clears throat> you know that ozone is uh, uh, present in the two levels troposphere ozone which is below 10 to 12 km uh, and uh, i mean in the tropics basically in the tropical like if you take a uh, example of uh, indian subcontinent uh, troposphere is up to 18 km but if it goes to polar uh, polar region like antarctic uh, or arctic the, the pol poles uh, the i mean uh, troposphere is the uh, tropopause height is uh, below 10 km so Uh, about 18 km or 20 km that is called to be a stratosphere which is a good ozone because it absorbs the harmful uh, ultraviolet radiation which will have a uh, significant impact on human health which is absorbed at this uh, stratosphere ozone but the uh, ozone which is present in the troposphere is a bad ozone even it is uh, having direct impact on the agriculture uh, yield the troposphere ozone which reduces the yield of uh, the uh, some of the uh, crops so this ozone hole uh, is uh, very much important to monitor in the uh, in the uh, uh, continuous basis because if if it uh, certain limit if it uh, uh, if the ozone uh, the layer uh, expands the uh, size of the ozone hole expands the amount of uh, uv radiation that reach uh, in the antarctic region it will have a global impact on the uh, i mean the, it will it will have a greater impact on the global level so that is why we we are continuously measuring this ozone concentration uh, using space based also india meteorological has uh, developed uh, uh, department has has a ground based network on this uh, to monitor the total column ozone over different locations which are latitudinally distributed over the country also to monitor this ozone people are also launching uh, balloon based uh, <coughs> ozone platforms which measures the vertical information from uh, surface to 30 35 km altitude uh, from the from the surface at very high resolution so these are all the, the these data is very much useful for the uh, giving the information services as well as the the research purpose to see that how the atmospheric dynamics also plays a role in uh, uh, in the troposphere as well as in the stratosphere so this is again the ozone layer whole area how it changes during different seasons like as i said that this august september october is the peak season for the uh, uh, ozone hole <coughs> and when it comes to the bhuvan uh, like uh, isro nrs so this is uh, india's uh, geo platform uh, uh, indian geo platform of isro uh, where uh, different ministerial applications where different uh, the uh, the um, ministerial applications which covers like agriculture water forestry also e governance and climate and environment also uh, there are many parameters so there are uh, thematic wise also many services are available so i think uh, this is the right time uh, because they are all students so it is very useful uh, portal and many many uh, uh, the applications are available and one can also create uh, the plug and play we, um, on the portal to create your region of interest and to see that how it is uh, changing over a period of time and this is uh, the other portal like now real time data you are able to see in the bhunidhi and also you can see the changes also uh, recently our uh, ocl3 has also detected so uh, in the northwest region pollution so uh, uh, i mean in the northwest region during the stubble uh, stubble warning period how the pollution has moment uh, moving ar uh, around that region so the bhunidhi portal can also be explored 
to see that uh, different features how they are changing and what resolution uh, is available so the uh, today the space policy has uh, uh, opened up data up to 5. Uh, uh, i mean the greater than or equal to 5 meter uh, uh, resolution spatial uh, meter uh, 5 meter spatial resolution data so you can also see and download uh, from this uh, portal for different applications and here uh, the isro has also started at nrsc national information system for climate and environment studies in which we we have established uh, the across the country ground based observation network because uh, we we know that we, we we have a strong background in the remote sensing but uh, the some of the parameters to qualify as a is essential climate variables which will have direct impact on uh, climate also will be useful for the uh, for a better assessment and adaptation mitigation plans so so to validate these observations we established a uh, ground based uh, observation network and uh, this nices the national information system for climate and environment studies is also working with the different ministries in the country to 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 give the effective information through this uh, uh, program and to know about this program like the uh, like so uh, we we are also conducting outreach programs to see that uh, how this nices is evolved and how, how nices is progressing and what nices is giving uh, <clears throat> on time to time and modeling aspects and networking with the people and networking uh, uh, of the observations so these are all uh, the integrated to give the better information from the nices so some of the essential climate variables is is, uh, is uh, very important because it has a certain a uh, criteria to meet the uh, to call to call to be a, a essential climate variable in terms of its accuracy stability and precision of the parameter and sensor to sensor uh, the bias or variability because today some uh, uh, for example temperature measured by some sensor and after 10 years the other sensor will be used from the space so but there should be consistent between these two sensors then only we call that particular parameter is an ecv so the the <clears throat> these standards are given by the global climate observing systems gcys as part of world meteorological organization there are 54 ecvs uh, are uh, 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 categorized under different uh, the spheres like ocean atmosphere land so and from uh, our uh, the nices uh, at nrc isro we are generating uh, 13 ecvs uh, i mean the 10 are already available and a few are uh, like four four are planned in the near future and uh, many other useful geophysical products also also available in the nices portal uh, one can see that uh, nices.nrc.gov.in so these products are developed uh, using national and international satellite uh, uh, observation so these are the ecvs under atmosphere like uh, surface upper air atmosphere composition when it comes to the atmosphere composition like as i said aerosols carbon dioxide basically greenhouse gases clouds ozone and their precursors and the hydrosphere ground water lakes river discharge cryosphere so like that uh, land uh, atmosphere land ocean so these are the uh, spheres uh, having the the different uh, parameters uh, under each pool of the uh, the uh, this is the lighting map it is it is a ground based lighting map one one can see that the the count where the uh, high prone areas are the maximum flashes are occurring on the ground so it is it is monitored using the dense network of our lighting uh, uh, a, a established by the isro <coughs> across the country and this is uh, uh, i just wanted to give because as i said in the beginning uh, we are starting the services uh because today we have different services available from different agencies and uh, there are background in the background so we have to develop uh, some kind of uh, standards i think uh, uh, some of you know that uh, open geospatial uh, uh, ogc standards uh, open Ge geospatial consortium so in that there are many standards to provide these services so we we, we are going to develop uh, implement uh, sorry we are going to implement those ogc standards to give these services so we have this data like numerical model data earth observation non climatic data socio socio economic data basically so these these data are all available and to meet and uh, today the open science should meet this fair findability accessibility interoperability and uh, reusability so this is mandated for the any climate services so one can play with this and reusable interoperable between the uh, <coughs> portals so th these are th these we are we are going to follow and give the services uh, in the in the future so that is what uh, we are going to start in this
last year uh, climate services using the ogc standards we are going to implement that using ogc standard so when it comes to the for example information is in, only in terms of kilobytes but see uh, when when to create this kilobyte information we need to have petabyte information and we goes through the different processing different chains chains of mechanism to give this information as a as a as as a uh, uh, everybody can understand so to that level to bring that information we need to follow all those things so we we are uh, we are going to do this uh, work very soon and i thank everyone and i thank the sama for uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, my presentation includes most of the open resources and thank you so much thanks a lot I mean, there is a huge information today you have shared and i'm quite sure that all the participants uh, could be beneficial by going through your presentation which it, which will be also available in the youtube so before going going to start the question answer session this is usually our customary to take uh, the photo session to do the photo sessions virtual photo session so our photographer dr mohan kumar das is not available today but please all others switch on your camera and today dibya you just little help uh, instead of mohan uh, thablal sir yeah thablal sir uh, dr baby shiman yeah after a long time uh, we are seeing dr mandira ma'am here Ma'am, you are mute. Yeah. It's been a while. Yes, it's. A, yeah. I'm glad to be here, and thank you for the presentation, Dr. Mahesh. Yeah. Thank so, you. So, uh, thank you, sir, and Dr. Baby Simon, sir. Please switch on the camera. Yeah, thank you, sir. In the car, thank you, sir. It's very dynamic. Started when he was working. Sabriel, sir, but Simon, sir, go check. Can you get? Who available for me? Uh, Simon G is there, but <clears throat> okay. So we can take the uh, photograph now. So let's put all smile. And, you know, today is the last photo session of this lecture series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now, after the photo session, we are going for the question and answer session. Uh, this session will be conducted by Dr. Mili Ghosmam and Dr. Dibba Prakash. So please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Swagata. Actually, uh, there are uh, very less question. Uh, the one question is from Dr. Uh, Mr. Giris. Uh, as per him, uh, is. Uh, Question is: I have read the, that RCP 3.4 was the most plausible scenario in 2021. He has given some link also, and as per this link, uh, that uh, scenario he has mentioned is it is uh, like uh, emissions for 2052 to 2040, and uh, the prediction is for 2100, and by that time, the warming is by 2.5 degrees centigrade. so his question is is that possibility is still favored please what is your view on the most likely path yeah actually uh, that's what like if uh, we know that uh, net carbon zero i mean zero emission by 2070 so if we can achieve that uh, zero emission by 2070 then that is possible okay thank you sir uh, the next question is by dr rao mr rao uh, as per him what is the role of magnitude and phase spectrum of fourier transform spectrometer in analyzing the aerosols uh, for example uh, we have uh, uh, ftr spectrometer we also have uh, which gives the uh, uh, uh basically the signal uh, electromagnetic spectrum so there we need to pick the absorption uh, bands of each species for example for even aerosols also we need to have 550 nanometer as the absorbing uh, band and the, the so that uh, we will be able to give that uh, how much aerosol content in the total column 
but here this uh, his question is phase spectrum and magnitude so basically uh, if you can elaborate then i i'll be able to tell uh, what exactly he is referring actually it is not possible for them to talk. Uh, speak okay yeah uh-huh. So uh, he has further asked that what are the data sets uh, which uh, we can use to analyze this concept? Uh, which concept? This uh, Fourier transform and all. So some data sets are there which can be. Used. No, I don't think the this kind of information is available like magnitude and phase. Okay. So because those are all like uh, the measurement level, even whether it is a ground or space based. So, but those parameters. I don't think it's available. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Dibya, uh, can you uh, go through the YouTube questions if it is there? Um, no, no, ma'am. There is no question. Okay. Uh, sir, there is one question from my side. Uh, yes, ma'am. The, uh, lighting data is available and uh, we can go through that the last 15 days. But the archival data is possible or not? I mean, suppose I want to... Uh, see the lightning data of 2019. Yeah, or... you can write to madam. You can write to us, the consent person. I think uh, you will get it. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. I, I think there is a feedback uh, in the portal itself. There you, you can request. I think you will get it. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you, uh, Dr. Milimam and Dr. Dibya Prakash. Uh, uh, let, let's check is there any more questions or not. Uh, no, it is related to the exam sessions. Data archival concept. Yeah, I, do, I didn't get the question very well. Please suggest a data archival for this concept. That is related to previous question. Okay. No? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. So now I would like to give the vote of thanks. Usually it's a team and vote of things is done by Dr. Mohan Kumar Das. But today he is busy and at at Inquies, uh, Hyderabad in, in India. So I'm going to do that vote of thanks. So let's I share the screen. One moment. Is it shared? No. No, no, the screen is not shared yet. Screen is not shared. I don't know. I hope now it is. It is shared now? Yeah, it is coming here. It's there. It's there. Yeah. First of all, thanks a lot. Being a convener, I mean, I'm extremely happy for this uh, lecture series. And also, uh, I I know that uh, Bhatia sir, Thablial sir, Baby Simon sir, they are continuous effort to make it perfect. Uh, there is no more what uh, to explain, express our happiness. Uh, apart from this, a sincere thank you uh, for being part of this remarkable 20th session in the Satellite Weekly Online Lecture Series on the use of satellite data for climate service. In our captivating session led by the extraordinary Mohesher Scientist SF, National Remote Sensing Agency, ISRO, Hyderabad, the world of satellite meteorology unfolded like a beautiful narrative because you have shown a lot of sources because uh, being a teacher, we face a lot of questions, a lot of queries about the data. The first question is that where is the data available? Data is not available, all this. Your beautiful lecture and the narrative actually helps a lot. It, your expertise not only made the complexities accessible, but also transformed learning into a genuinely enhancing experience. With the smooth inclusion of real world examples and practical tips for real time podcasting, my a layer of beauty and inspiration, akin to the hands on magic writing exploration on utilizing of satellite data for climate application. Hats up to our outstanding SAMA executive committee uh, council team members, Dr. Mili Ma'am, Dr. Dibba Prakash, and Dr. Rohini Bhavar, 
for leading the session nicely and sparkling engaging discussions to our diverse global participants they are always in a three digit that's the most you know motivating part your varied and valuable contribution turned this session into a truly memorable occasion a heartfelt appreciation to our one of the spinal cord abm professor tagi sir today we missed professor semester das sir but when apart from his presence most probably sama cannot reach this level in last few years and dr mohan kumar das dr tb lakshmi kumar for being pillars of support on this enlightening journey thank you for joining us on this enriching exploration into the world of satellite meteorology on the satellite data for climate study may the insights gain today guide us towards even more discoveries in the future keep in touch with us we would really love to, to you know answer and discuss collaboration whatever the possible uh, thing can happen lastly with warmth and gratitude we are completing uh, this lecture series and usually uh, we also invite the others like uh, today semester sir is not there uh, tagi sir is there but after a long time uh, dr mandira ma'am has joined so if you share few words with us uh, dr mandira ma'am is uh, the joint secretary of sama she is the joint secretary of sama and so my see mode now ma'am do you have any yes. words yeah well um thank you very much uh, uh dr swagata uh, it's indeed been a very nice uh, lecture series this particular one uh, relating to uh, looking at satellite uh, data and information and linking it to climate services that's very close to my heart as well and i think today uh, dr mahesh has given us a range of different uh, sources of data all the way from the global data from wmo to copernicus to some of the regional data sets that's available from imd from the um, other different portals ncmr wf as well as i think also the one from the um, the uh, the one from the his own parent organization um, so there is a suit of these data sets that are available and i think the uh, students that are listening to this particular a uh, series of uh, lectures is uh, going to be quite a bit enlightened with the data and information that is available hey, because data is the core of what is required for any kind of analysis so it is very important that we have such kind of access to these data sets and this today's uh, you know lecture has provided us um, some kind of an avenue to look into the different data portals that are available and how that can be best uh, used in terms of provision of these uh, climate services like he said in initially how this can be used at different levels by decision makers to make the right decisions i think that's where climate services then becomes very important so i thank all summer um on behalf of summer also all the students yeah. that are here yes. today listening to this presentation and i'm really glad that uh, i have been able to join this last lecture uh, after some time so thank you very, very much dr swagata for this yeah uh, thank you ma'am uh, i also would like to uh, hear some words from our ch chairman of the satellite meteorology committee dr rc bhatia sir okay thank you dr swagata and uh, to mahesh and others present with the lecture and even now there are a good number of participants are continuing uh, about 86 87 uh, i think uh, we have had a very good series of uh, uh, talks by different experts in various aspects of space based systems their data availability utilization application and uh, i am sure after this series the participants would have gained sufficient information and uh, they would rather use it for day to day application and research for whatever may be the area of activity and 
one thing uh, which I had missed in these uh, presentation was real interaction with the participants. You suppose you give some exercise and uh, then you want to make an assessment how much they have uh, understood, how much, uh, what exactly they have done with the exercise. So that particular part, maybe uh, I couldn't get much feedback. So maybe I think next time when we organize such things, we can improve upon this. And uh, But even then, I'm sure many participants would have gained sufficient information and they will make best use of it in the years to come. And uh, they will improve their services in whatever area of their responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, from the data, I mean, just the, uh, actually shared the data. More than 20 countries uh, have joined this session with more than 190 participants. So, uh, okay, so around 190 participants were there from 20 countries. Okay. Yeah, Mohan has joined. Mohan, we have just completed two of your jobs, uh, the photography and the vote of thanks. But still, we want to see your photo. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. Simon, sir, do you, uh, if you can share a few of words about the course, because today is the end of the lecture series. And your contribution, even Thabilal sir's contributions are huge. Uh, moral motive boosting was really helped us a lot. Sir, you are mute. Uh, okay, you are asking me to give comment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It has, uh, I was not able to see all the lectures, uh, uh, but anyhow, it was a great experience to have this uh, course conducted. Uh, I should thank Dr. Bhatiaji for and uh, other of my colleagues to plan this lecture in a, such a nice way. And uh, most important thing, as uh, Bhatia Sir has told, each participant has to go through these uh, lectures once more so that they are able to get a good, uh, uh, they can recap the whole lecture. Especially it is good that it is uh, telecast in the YouTube. So that it will be easier for those people who are who have missed the lecture. For example, I myself have missed few lectures. I could uh, uh, see the lecture in the YouTube. So and this is this is a way. And also it is good for this organizing committee to have conducting a quiz uh, on the thing before awarding this uh, whatever this uh, uh, participation or whatever this uh, certificates. So I request all the participants. Even if it is they are not able to uh, meet or present at one particular lecture, they can continue to see the YouTube and have your questions asked. So I would like uh, this is uh, Sama to conduct such more question, uh, question and answer sessions and also more such lectures in be beneficial. And uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, Thablial, sir, just. We also we also want to hear some of your guidance, word, uh, feedback. Uh, can we? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. We are getting your voice without seeing you, but. Can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. First, first of all, uh, I congratulate all all the members you know, associated with this uh, lecture series. This is very nicely arranged lectures, and uh, all the lecturers, you know, they were uh, picked up very uh, properly. So uh, the justice, full justice, was done by uh, all the lecturers, lecturers uh, in uh, in uh, dealing with their uh, subject of uh, expertise. And I myself, because I'm I'm uh, working in the field of satellite meteorology, so this for me this was very much satisfying that so many uh, students and researchers, they uh, attended this uh, lecture series. And you know, this will uh, this will propagate the satellite meteorology in this uh, South Asian countries. And uh, I hope in future we will have more and more uh, satellite even from our uh, this ISRO or our uh, this uh, various countries in South Asia. And we will uh, benefit from uh, expertise of each other. So once again, congratulations uh, to organizers for successfully completing this uh, this uh, course of course thank you thank you uh, uh thank you sir 
the concluding remarks and we need to uh, thank you swagata and uh, i think valuable comments provided by our organizing committee and scientific committee members are most welcome uh, they are really uh, we need to have an interactive sessions with the participants and as suggested that these lectures are available on youtube uh, i'm sure uh, swagata and team is going to conduct uh, exams some online yes sir and for, for that uh, let's publicize again and try to all the our registered uh, participants to go through the youtube and if we can also have a one out session if they they send some questions we can seek uh, inputs from our experts uh, so let's do one out session like this if possible or all i think this would have be possible without uh, our experts and patia sahab dr saiba we are democracy and resource person so i am personally grateful you know the samais is uh, it stands lies with its members and the resource persons and uh, we have been able to sustain because of this the last three online lecture series first on atmospheric physics followed by the wrf and now the satellite map we are going to have the next program on radar meteorology uh, and uh, as uh, suggested by dr tapiyan we may also plan at least uh, after six months or one year an update short uh, capsule on satellite meteorology uh, to refresh the uh, existing spinal cord of our uh, spinal cord of the sama yes thank you yeah, yeah thank you sir so um, usually we don't ask uh, to our fellow members like rohini mili ma'am divya so but no, today sir. if you want to say anything please feel free rohini do you want to say anything no sir only thank you sir thank Thanks to the BIT Mishra and Summer definitely for conducting this, and hope for the next months to come soon. Okay, thank you, and uh, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, it was a wonderful lecture series, and I missed someone, but uh, the last one I also, uh, Mr. Mahesh uh, was there in BIT in two thousand nineteen, I think, <laughs> in our department. Uh, During one workshop with Dr. Datta. Yes, 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 ma'am. I remember now. <laughs> yeah. So that right. time, uh, yeah, I met you, and uh, I was the. Okay, Datta means Dipendu Datta. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Divya, Divya is our old alumni from BIT, so currently in another place. So how did you feel? Hey, this yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. For sharing, uh, for giving me this platform, actually this is a wonderful journey. From last three months, we have started uh, in September, and uh, from September to January, or now it is February. February. So this is a wonderful journey, and I hope all the participants have enjoyed and learned a lot. And all the expert um, has given a wonderful lecture. So uh, it is it is a rem remarkable journey of some and, uh, and what we have what we have conducted with the with help help of some and uh, different expert of different field. So it it is uh, 
very uh, wonderful experience for all the participants as well. And we have enjoyed all. We have enjoyed uh, because uh, every time we have some uh, different uh, issues, sometimes we have some different uh, things, but we have conducted uh, in a very, very uh, good manner. Yeah. So it is a wonderful experience from for me. And uh, thank you all for joining this workshop. Thanks. So let's say bye. Namaste. Okay, 